Hey, patrons. Thank you so much for all the continued support. It means a lot to me. And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up reading Demon in White by Christopher Rocchio. This is the third book in the Sun Eater series. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts on finishing this book, which was just right now. So this book's incredible. Uh, this book's so good. Uh, I can't say enough positive things about what I just read uh, in this series as a whole from what I've read so far. It's, it's just incredible and truly one of the most underrated and underappreciated and underread uh, fantasy series of all time. Uh, or sci-fi or science fantasy or fantasy science fiction or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this deserves to be one of the titans of this genre or these genres. This book is so crazy good. I, I couldn't comprehend how uh, this book could be better than what I read out of the second book in the series, Howling Dark, but this did it. This is my favorite book in the series. Um, I hope that this trend continues um, with the next, I think there's five books out in the series so far. I don't know how many are planned in the series. I wanna say like seven main books, uh, but there's a bunch of novellas. I think there's like a novella between every single one of these books. and now three short story collections. So there's a lot of Sun Eater to read. Um, and I'm probably about halfway through uh, all of the published material at this point, maybe a little bit over half. Uh, but gosh, this was good. It, it just took everything that I loved about the series and focused on those things. Um, and it took the things that I didn't love about this series and essentially just kind of got rid of them. And, and that's just so cool. I, I love that. I, I just feel like this book was just kind of, kind of like tailor made for my interests. Uh, because, you know, I find that the Sun Eater, which in general uh, is an, an easily digestible book, it kind of went down this sort of predictable path in the first book that you would kind of expect to see in a start to a fantasy series. And it started to do its own thing in the second book but started to kind of get more into the science fiction type of book. Now, I do happen to like science fiction. It's not my favorite. I'm a fantasy guy. I feel like if the second book was a little more emphasis in the science fiction than the fantasy, I feel like this third book brought back to that fantasy side of things because it just, it felt more like an epic fantasy in the moments that were, have been set up that we finally got to, got to hit. I mean, when I think of like epic fantasy, well, I know this isn't the definition of it. There are moments in epic fantasy where I'll want to just jump out of my chair and start cheering with excitement. And when I see these massive heroic deeds being done. And that happened many times in this book um, where I just was cheering for the characters here and just like mouth watering at what was being set up and what ended up getting delivered just blew me out of my expectations. It's just wonderful. So. If you're not familiar with the series, and you know, I, 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 it's, I'm always surprised by how many people watch these videos that have not read any books in the series yet, uh, which is why I keep all these things really spoiler free. But the Sun Eater in general, my you know, 30 second pitch for the Sun Eater is you've got this character, uh, Hadrian Marlowe, who is telling the story of his life. Uh, he's writing it down in a journal, telling it to the reader. Um, and he has destroyed a sun and killed billions of people, if not trillions, I don't know the number. And ended a, another rival race of, of being and wiped them off the face of, of the universe. And he's responsible for this. And he's telling his story. And it starts with very humble roots. Not humble. I mean, he's born in a high class kind of situation. But, um, you know, what you feel like in the first book is he's like this really important guy. In the grand scheme of things in the universe, uh, he is like this big. But he becomes larger than life. And by this third book you see who he's finally turning into. This amazingly powerful, hugely respected, um, you know, huge, like the most important person in the, in, not, I keep wanting to say the world, but uh, this book is dealing with uh, a universe full of people. So, you know, like the most important man in the universe, uh, some, in many ways more important than the, uh, than the emperor. And it's so fun to watch that progression. And we're finally here. I feel like it's now really just like hitting its stride. I worry that it's not going to be able to continue its stride though, because so many people tell me that this is the best book of the group and that, that worries me. I mean, what I want to see is progression throughout these books and in all books that I read, I want them to build upon each other. And 
in some ways that would be hard for somebody like Christopher Rocchio because so many authors get better in writing as they go along. They become better authors. But Christopher Rocchio started out uh, like at the top of the top of his game for writing. Mind-blowingly good for, a, I think he was like in his early 20s when he wrote the first book. And he wrote it like he was some, you know, 70-year-old poet that is just spitting these life lessons at you in wonderful, wonderful prose. Uh, just incredible, like crisp writing that just makes you sit back in awe. And how he's able to do that at that age is mind-blowing. But I don't find that he's getting better as a writer he goes along because he's just, he started at the top and he's staying at the top. What makes these books different is the plot. And I happen to have liked the progression this plot has gone. Now, where do we go from here? I don't know. I mean, I, I know where the plot has to end up. Uh, and he's told you that in the first page. Uh, Hadrian is going to end the rival race that they're fighting against since the first book. And he's going to be responsible for it. And he's going to destroy his son and, and become both hero and villain at the end of the story. But how we're going to get there, I don't know. Uh, because I don't want to ruin anything on the plot here, but I just don't understand where that plot progression is going to go. And we, I could see us getting into some lulls here. I mean, if we have four more books or so until the end of the series, I mean, I feel like he could wrap things up in the next book. So how he's going to stretch things out for thousands of more pages, I just don't know. But I can't wait to find out. Um, because just everything's good here. I mean, this is a book that has some of the most memorable characters that I have ever read or probably ever will read. Um, it's got a plot that somehow got significantly better. It's got um, a, uh, like I mentioned, the prose, which is just top of the top. It's got this science fiction now turning into more of a magic element here on the powers that some of the characters have that are somehow unique after I've read hundreds of fantasy books um, and getting more important to the plot without being overly complicated. Um, there is complexity here. There are even some moments that I'm just kind of head scratching. One moment in particular, I actually had to go on Discord and ask uh, Christopher Rocchio what, uh, how to make sense of what I had read. And his explanation made a lot of sense. And it's kind of what I thought, but I kind of wanted to make sure. And so I don't want to say like things are basic here. They're, they're not. But it's just this nice mix of um, accessible while also having some depth to it, which is, which is wonderful. Um, you know, I just, ultimately, I just, I, I, I don't know who wouldn't like this. You know, normally when I read books, I have some caveat, right? Um, you know, if you like, you know, I just finished a book right before this, um, that I, that I'll have an interview up either right before this one or right after this one, depending on how my editing goes, um, where I said, you know, you, I feel like people would love this book, but you have to like kind of a darker story. Um, I'll have these books where I'll read, you know, where, you know, you should like this if you like these progression aspects to your stories or, you know, you, caveats. I don't see it here. You know, I guess the caveat is you have to like fantasy books. I guess the caveat is you have to be okay with some science fiction elements in your books. Seems like a pretty broad caveat, right? On a fantasy books channel. <laughs> you know, you'll like this book if you like fantasy books, I guess is what I have to say. Uh, in case that somehow the algorithm picks this up and is showing this video to non-fantasy readers, I guess. But who doesn't like this? I mean, how could you not like this? Certainly these people exist. This book doesn't have a 5 out of 5 on, on Goodreads. No book does. It's an art form, right? Art, art, art is subjective. But I just, I'm not a smart enough guy to figure it out. Um, and I've never run into anybody that hasn't liked these things. I mean, in general, people like stuff. Um, but I'll also hear people that are like, yeah, Matt, I'm glad you loved it, but... I've uh, never heard that. Um, there, I, I've now made several videos of, uh, of books from the series, and I don't think I've heard somebody yet that's like, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. I didn't. So that's cool. <laughs> Good job, Christopher Rocchio. Uh, I hope so badly that this, this series takes off and it, it gets the attention that it deserves. Um, I would be, out of any series that I've ever read, this one deserves it the most. Um, you know, and 
it's not my favorite series I've ever read. Maybe it will turn into that. But you know, the series that I like more than that have taken off to at least an acceptable level. You know, I'm thinking about like Malazan, thinking about the first law, thinking about Dandelion Dynasty, these things that are pretty common names in the fantasy genre. Uh, and this one's not. I don't really understand why. And, uh, you know, I, and I'll never, not to like go totally off track here, but you know, I, it's my channel, I do what I want. <laughs> but I'll never really understand why some books take off and some don't. You know, there's gotta be things that are happening behind the scenes um, where a lot of books that are published, this book is self-published, I think. Maybe not, I could be wrong. Uh, I read on ebooks, so I don't always like look at the spines of books and really figure it out. But um, certain publishers will really pump in a lot of money into things and advertise in the right spots and help behind the scenes. Certain books are kind of designed to appeal to the major award type things, you know, the, the Hugos and the Nebulas and the things like that, where they might not be things that I love, but they're tailor-made to try to attract those types of awards. And I think that's the nicest way I could say that. I could say some really nice, I could rant for a long time about the way those awards are awarded, but I don't want to get canceled and everyone get mad at me. So I'll, you know, I'll back off that, that uh, controversial subject. But I just don't know why something like this has taken off when so many series that are not as good or downright bad are given a lot of attention. So hopefully my faith in humanity gets restored a little bit uh, when I look back on this in 10 years and everyone's talking about it. And hopefully less, but generally how I feel. So I don't need to keep going on this. I love this series. I love this book. Can't wait to keep reading. Go read it. You deserve it. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all my patrons with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier and Librarian tier patrons. Anna G, CJ, Darren, Gregory, Jonathan, My Book is Lit, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Orthodoxia, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Sydney Baker, Tahir, Anna, Andra, Angelo, Blair, Brock, Evan, Harry B, Joe, Kat Mick, Maria, Michael Sugarman, Sky. TW57, Wacky, and Zion. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video, and if you want to watch some more content from my channel, click over here and I've got some good videos for you. Thanks so much.